today we're going to quickly talk about uh, some, some of the support we have for um, assigning digital content within uh, using I ICRT. We allow you to assign the content um, using some XQuery functions. We have two, two categories of functions. One is symmetric, so that means we're using a shared password, a shared key, and for this case we're using HMAC. Uh, within HMAC itself, we can uh, use different digests and algorithms as well. Uh, for asymmetric uh, methods, we actually support um, using keys in certain formats. One is the uh, P8, and one is the P12, and then if you have private keys in a Java key store, you can use that as well. Um, one of the things that we don't have right now is that you can sign the content, but uh, if, if somebody sent you some signed content, we don't have any functions or utilities for you to verify, so we don't have the inverse of these um, um, of the uh, digital signatures, so you hard for you to verify any any data that came through that is signed signed by somebody else. Uh, so that's a TBD um, right now. Okay. Um, the other thing is all the uh, hashing and um, um, signature related functions they operate on string based content. Um, so what that means is that if you have any message, any payload, um, username, password, those kind of things, it, they actually work well for those those use cases. But on the other hand, let's say you're trying to, you know, create an attachment or trying to stream an attachment, um, which is a binary content, um, we don't have a way to create a signature or hash for that yet. Okay. So the current focus is actually um, geared towards enabling people to create um, service connectors, um, and where, some the, where some of the connectors require you to use, um, you know, signed headers uh, as part of the payload all the digital signature functions where you can create HMAC, um, sign the certificates or key files. They're available in the process designer, um, IPDs, as well as in the service connector. Um, in my example, so if I show any, it will be using a util prefix for the function name, and that's because it's used in the IPDs. Um, for service connectors, for now, um, um, the final, you'll see it in the final document. Uh, we use the FM prefix, but that may change um, with some backwards compatibility. So let me just talk about what we have for symmetric, right, which is HMAC. Um, we had this before as well, but I'm just formally documenting it here actually in this presentation. Um, so we have um, HMAC with a um, couple of ways you can do that. You can use SHA-1, which is common, and SHA-2 um, Once we have calculated the hash using whatever method you have to specify here, we can, by default, the content, the what's returned as a string, um, comes with base64 encoding. Now I have not shown here, but there are additional arguments used in the final documentation that you can say you want it to be in hex, hex64, or base64 UR encoding. Those are just other alternate ways of um, encoding your uh, your final hash. Right. Um, so one of the uh, uh, use cases you'll find this this method of um, um, uh, using the hash is actually. Um, Amazon AWS, for example, they use that. Um, Twitter also uses that, uh, part of the authorization header. So in order for you to um, uh, uh, create an authorization header, you've got to use, uh, Amazon is going to give you a password. Obviously, you have your own password. And then and the idea is that um, they'll give you a certain um, set of payloads for you to create, and then they want you to sign it um, or create the HMAC for that payload and then send it to Amazon. They, in turn, will then authenticate you. So let me just go back to... Um, the next one. So, right. So in Amazon, uh, typically they require an authorization header, and the format is going to be something like this. So you're going to say, here's an authorization header. Um, it's going to be AWS, and the access ID is um, uh, you have to provide their uh, AWS um, access key ID. This is something you have. So if you log into Amazon Developer Console, uh, you can generate some credentials and the credentials are two part with AWS. One one part is the um, access key. It's an ID. It's like your username, for example. And they also provide you a um, what they call the secret ID, which is almost like a password. Right? So they provide you both pieces of information. Um, so when we interact with Amazon Web Services, and if you're trying to create a, a service kind of example, um, we have to create an authorization header. Typically, you might see like basic or things like that, but in this case, it's Amazon's AWS. And the format you, you do is you provide your um, key ID, and you have to provide a signature content here. 
So I'm going to just walk you through what's required for signature content. Um, with Amazon, they actually are documented. I'll just take you out to a browser and show this, this information. The typical signature is we'll actually use this function here, which is HMAC1, and we'll provide the string to sign, and you provide your pass, your Amazon uh, secret key ID. Right? So it could be it's basically your password. And this results in a basic super encoded content uh, that you can use it over here. Okay. Now, the, the string to sign is, is kind of complicated, and it's a combination of various headers, your HTTP verb, um, and any other additional parameters that you use, including question parameters. Um, it's actually documented in the website, and I'll just show you an example of uh, what they mentioned here. But the key thing is you have to use this, this guy here in order to, for you to generate um, your signature. So as you can see here, I mean, in this I, I, uh, this URL is on the slide deck, but um, typically what you do is, um, here's the algorithm, right? So this is the format, you have a header. So here's what they said, okay. In order for you to create the second signature uh, authorization header, you can provide the term AWS, your access ID, which is almost like a username, and a signature. Um, the signature is, is the basic to encoder content of uh, HMAC1, HMAC, sorry, HMAC, the SHA1, um, the password, and then string to, uh, the string to sign. And this is why it's kind of complicated because it says, oh, you got to use the HTTP word, maybe it's a GET request or a PUT request. Um, if you're uploading a file or something, you have an MD5 hash of it, you've got to put that in there. If you, if you have a content like content type like um, image slash JPEG or something, you have to put it there, you have to put the date, um, a list of any special headers you'll be using, and then the resource you're trying to access. And if I scroll down here, I mean, they'll mention a few um, few things here need to be done. So this is an example of your, what your access key ID and your access secret might look like. And what they're saying is, oh, if you want to get this request from AWS, um, the algorithm to create the content assigned is you use your verb, new line. Uh, if you have MD5, put that so we don't have any, it's blank. Um, if you have a content type, there isn't a content type in the get request, so it's blank. Um, the current date, time, a new line. And this is where the canonical path to the resource, and they describe it up here. Okay. You take all these, you sign it. And when you sign it and base 64 encode it, you end up with this part of the request right there. Okay. And they're given like different examples here, different use cases. So uh, if I go back to the slide, it's this one. Right? So you want to this is the hard part, figuring out what to what to sign. But once you know what to sign, you just use your um, secret um, ID and Sign it. So I created some uh, um, connection parameter properties, and one is the access ID, um, and other one is your secret. Right. So typically this will be encrypted normally like that. Uh, then in my actions, what I was trying to do was say list everything in, in a bucket in a given bucket. Right. So I created an action called list bucket, real list bucket content, and obviously the input parameter has to be my bucket ID. So I'm asking about the bucket ID, and I just have a sample ID here. Um, and the binding is I'm going to use whatever they described in their in their documentation. So it's going to be HTTPS, your bucket ID, um, S3 dot Amazon AWS dot com. It's a GET request. And this is where it's, um, I'm using. Let me go back to this guy. All these are temporary variables. So this is where I'm trying to create the necessary um, uh, variables to create the signed request, right? So if I go back to Amazon's uh, content, they say, look, uh, let me go back here. I need the get, I need the blank line, blank line, blank line, the date, current date time that I'll be also be including, they have to match, and the path or the resource. So what I have done here is first I try to create um, the current date. So this, this is some X query. I mean, there is, I think we have a built in function called RFC, 8, RFC date time as well, but this is something to I was just playing around just to get a date time in the right format. Okay. Um, so now that we have a date, yes, um, I'm going to create this, um, the string that I need to sign. So it's basically get blank line, blank line, blank line, the current date, blank line, and the bucket. And this is slash and a slash. My sign content is going to be like this. I'm going to take this one, pass it into this function, 
which is HMAC1 signature, HMAC uh, SHA1 signature, and I pass in my string to uh, the string that needs to be signed, and I pass in my password, the key here, which is actually a connection property. Okay. And then I'll have a base 64 encoder value for this guy here, the signed string. And then after that is just the headers. The headers is authorized in the header that is AWS. Uh, this is space. Then I had to put my ID, which is the username, colon, and the signed content. And uh, the date has to be the same date, so I'm supplying the date. And um, this one you can ignore. I'm just showing what what we ended up generating over here. Uh, yes, string sign yes. But I'll just show you what went through the wire. Okay. So in the wire, we said the authorization header, AWS, my ID, and uh, the signed content here, and then the date. 